Hey there everybody, welcome back to Kara Cup 8 and welcome back to the channel. We've got a game again from round 1 of the qualifier section here. It's going to be between Maze playing as the Soban and Reverend. Rev Reverend? 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 I don't know how to pronounce his name, but I'm just going to say Reverend because that's easier. Uh, maybe he's German, I don't know. <laughs> playing as the Galsian. Um, <laughs> yeah, so <clears throat> this will be a fun matchup right here. You remember this was the matchup that I played in my game already. So uh, we've we've already seen that once in this tournament here, but this time with exciting colors. Maze is always changing his colors. This one is pretty cool though too. I really liked the uh, the last one that I saw him with though, where it was like um, looked kind of like the coalition default colors with like teal instead of the gray. That was pretty cool. But uh, that's also pretty nice looking. And this is like I think the inverse kind of of what it is in the campaign, but a little sharper and everything. So cool colors all around. Both players going to go for uh, Strikecraft Fabrication right in the beginning here. And actually two going on to CU's long distance here, so that, that indicates to me that Maze is not interested in playing any kind of a macro game here. He wants to just go for it, which is kind of uh, curious to see from a Soban player. But he's going to go heavy into LAVs it looks like, just now beginning to make some salvagers onto his RUs. Meanwhile what's uh, Reverend doing? Well, he's saving up a lot of CUs here. He may be making another production cruiser once that gets us up to uh, 600. I really hope he's not like refinery mode rushing. That would be kind of disastrous for him. Or maybe he's just floating on accident. I don't really know what's going on with him, but you know we'll have to see. He could be going for a salt chip fabrication, I suppose. I would... No, he's going for power reserve now. And that's kind of an odd power reserve too. That's very much unprompted. I mean, we haven't seen any aggression from the Sylvan player at all yet. Okay, well, I mean, to his credit, he has now used all of his resources as he queues up another base runner here, but it seems a little odd. That's, that's like, that's no build I've ever tasted. <laughs> I'm not... Oh, by the way, I have a question. If you use a targeting jammer on this thing right here, is it going to eliminate its view distance? I think it does, doesn't it? Not worth it at all, mind you, but... But hey. Just a thought. <clears throat> Anyhow, so second base runner is out here and he's obviously going to go immediately for an artifact. Looks like he wants to do a double extraction in the beginning, but I don't know how he's going to get map control here. LAVs should win this fight, no matter what, actually. Uh, <clears throat> even with the Savon player occasionally making salvagers, he outproduces the sand skimmers because these things are made so quickly. And they win in every, in every metric, actually, except for speed. But then they get the boost and they are faster than you, too. So... Um, which, by the way, I'm rather tilted about this kind of stuff. But, you know, we've talked about that a lot already. It's kind of addressed in the balance patches that are being made. Um, it's usually not a problem if you transition to some other type of unit quickly, but... Uh, but, yeah. Okay, there we go. So we do have Railgun Fabrication on the way. I was getting a little worried there. Uh, actually, no, I'm still very worried. So this production cruiser is completely alone. And I feel like he kind of thought he had map vision enough to do stuff like this because he has these two scanners out here, but he really doesn't. And this thing has got to be killed here now, so that makes things really uh, not good for Re uh, Reverend. He's going to start pulling his carrier back over there, but I mean, that's not going to get there in time, obviously. So Reverend's going to have to replace his production cruiser at a very early junction in this game here. He has picked off Maze's base runner, which is kind of nice, but that can't be compensation for this. And in fact, um, oh no, Maze, no, 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 do, no, do not leave that. That is like, okay, there we go. I thought he was going to leave for a second. I was actually going to be mad about that. Um, look at this, jumping on top of the base runner and getting the healing as well, so that's not even going to really help. Production Cruiser goes down, and honestly, I think the Sand Skimmers will still lose this fight, especially with LAV Armor 1 finished. No, okay, you got to kill this thing, there we go. Maze, man. You're playing with me. Actually, there's a lot more sand screamers here than I thought, so they're not going to win that fight by any means, but... Still, that is really bad. And the Soban player is definitely adequate defense back at home because he's got ALMs already. They're, they are powered up. He's got uh, AAV fabrication finished. Still making uh, LAVs here, but I think he should really just go for AAVs because um, that's going to be like the hard counter to these units. You won't have to worry about losing salvagers. In fact, he should have been making that already. The sand skimmers are here, so this is actually now a little bit, a little bit dangerous, I guess you could say. But I don't think anything's really going to come of it. But still playing it a little closer than I would have liked. One AAV would have just finished all of this immediately. And instead, he kind of has to take these trades. You know what I mean? 
But yeah, he should be able to repel the player quite nicely now. Reverin just now getting a uh, second production cruiser out there to replace that first one. And there's a support cruiser finished for Maze, I think? No, I guess not. He, yeah, he cancelled it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, he was making it earlier, I saw that, and I didn't see it on the queue anymore, so I thought he finished it, but no, he cancelled it to make some LAVs, which is justifiable, mind you, because of the situation there. And he's still not floating anything in, in uh, like, as a result, because he can just get this, um, carrier production upgrade here, so... That's quite nice. And I actually like the line of thinking that prompts him here to- No! No! Okay, <laughs> I thought he was gonna leave that one alive. I like the line of thinking here that's prompted Maze to get missile battery fabrication because the idea is well my opponent can't produce out of his carrier, or sorry, out of a production cruiser, so if he had gone for assault ship fabrication probably he's going to make interceptors now, right? So let me just get anti-air and make sure I'm ready for that. That's not really a blind pick, um, which I think is pretty cool. I don't know exactly like, I don't know if this kind of stuff is actually cognitive on the uh, player's part, but... Power reserve, mm. No. No. By the way, this guy, this guy can make it. No! 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 He totally could have just made it there. Because I was going to say, I think Reverend is trying to carry a rush. Is Power Reserve 2 already finished? In which case, getting the Space Burner would have been nice. Like, you see the distance it traversed there? Yeah, it could have gone that way. Like, that definitely would have made it. That's alright, though. Uh, and there is an Assault Railgun here, so with proper micro, you should be able to hold this one. But he does not want to be anywhere near that, that dune. He's gonna back away, but the problem is that he's once again moved out onto the flanks here, and now his base is kind of exposed. And I don't know if Maze is gonna take advantage of it, it looks like he just wants to go through the middle instead. But, um, he definitely had a window where he could have come in and done some more eco damage, which would have just been, like, redonkulous. Maze going up on a railgun fabrication right now, and he's seen Assault Rails, so he knows his opponent has that. A Galzian player has a lot of trouble, you know, uh, matching Sobon Rails fam with heavies if they have, like, a superior economy, so, I mean, at this point... Well... Mm. I kind of take it back. There's, there, I mean, there's no support cruiser here, so actually the economies are pretty even already. Still though, this strike fast, uh, strike craft force represents a serious problem for Reverend, and them being so upgraded as they are, which is very, mind you. You know, I feel like this is still going to turn out very nicely for Maze. But I'd like to see him get a support cruiser before he goes for rails here, just because, you know, those things are good. He can't fight this force, but he, he can't be pushed by it either. Because in order for this force to push, he would have to get through the ALMs. There's just nothing he's got to do that right now. Um, and actually, curiously, we see Missile Ship Fabrication come out for Reverend here. So both both players getting anti-air there. And for Reverend, I think it makes sense to research the tech at least because... Um, let me just pan between these two while I think. Yeah, right, because he doesn't know. He has seen nothing of like tech choices from his opponent here. As for Maze, I think making one missile battery was already a mistake, but he's actually gone and made two here. And the, I say that because you've seen railguns already, so you know that that's kind of what your opponent is going for. Um, and missile missile batteries would be nice if you know there's air on the field, but there really isn't. These things are not bad either against strikecraft, but when your opponent is transitioning into assault rails, that that's kind of like you know you don't expect to see interceptors for at least some time. He's gonna get some damage on that base friend, that's very nice, but more importantly, he seems to have circumvented the entire army, and he can just do whatever he wants in the back lines now, meanwhile. Still no sign of refinery mode, though he does have the resources for it. Um, Maze going for carrier production again before a support cruiser, but I don't like that move because there's no way he's gonna be able to produce that much. Right? I mean... Also, somehow we got in range of the assault ray guns, which is a bit suboptimal right here. But boost, of course, has like no cooldown, so he he's able to get away from that. Uh, I take my words back. I am sorry, Maze. You've done fine. I was gonna say, like, getting carrier production when you're on one base, like, getting two carrier production on one base is kind of ridiculous because you're never gonna be able to produce that much. But that is that is not true. He actually already is on two bases, so that's that's fine. Assault Railgun's actually getting a bit too close here, and two of them getting it picked off. Because that actually looked like a bit of a blunder suddenly for Maze moving in there, which is kind of funny because I thought it was actually a very good move, but then suddenly he just couldn't get any value from it. These Assault Railguns have strained, uh, strayed just way too close to these LAVs right here, and they're going to get slowly picked off there. I don't know if armor is finished. Yeah, there's no armor, and these things have damage 2? Damage 1. So, they're doing rather well. They're having a good time. 
Obviously, they did all get killed there, but the unit's loss is definitely in a favor. Uh, it's definitely in a favor maze in this scenario. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> Watch it, man. Watch it. Anyhow. Another extraction gonna come, or a extraction that is. This is first one for maze. That's quite nice. But at this point, he's gonna start taking control of the field. I would have rather thought there's only assault railguns still. Uh, refinery mode not yet researched, despite the fact there's two production cruisers. And this is like getting that production cruiser upgrade, right? I mean, you're not gonna be able to sustain this. I think refinery mode is definitely the right choice there. Still, the Reverend, look how many uh, power reserves he's gotten, and I really think he wants to go for this. He wants to go for a bit of a uh, bit of a cheeky play here. So if I were Maze, I would just I would just make railguns, and that should deal with this pretty handily. And he's got a few already, so that's good. Here he comes to give this base runner some grief, which is always nice, because they can't heal very quickly. Railguns are in the area to stop it, but here are the railguns from Maze. Actually, really nice, uh, really nice job of getting cover there, though. But now they have vision. No, they still don't. Wait, no, they do. They do. Do they? Yeah, they do. Okay, so... <laughs> vision is a little hard to figure out when you're fighting, like, over this, like, bit of terrain right here, which is pretty fun. Um, but it doesn't usually happen, so that, that kind of scenario is not very common. But yeah, if you're Maze, I think the LAVs are kind of nice, but you haven't seen any strike craft from your opponent recently, and Assault Railguns, like, make the mistake, with proper micro, these are the hard counter to the LAVs. So, I think more Railguns has got to be the, got to be the plan. And that would be convenient because if his opponent does go for a carrier rush, that's going to have you covered very nicely, so... This scanner in a super annoying position where it constantly keeps going out of line of sight. I didn't realize that you could do that right there. But these guys have got a boost and get out of there because they're going to take a lot of damage from these. Or rather, I think they should boost. It doesn't look like they're going to. And then one gets taken out, though. The railguns are over on this side. There's only four of them. Like, you imagine, uh, rather than having four LAVs here, you could have two more railguns. That would definitely be good. Especially because you got to expect your opponent is eventually going to go for heavies. Yeah, there's one already. Um, and in this case, that's going to be fine, but you want to be covered for this. And so Maze is going to begin making railguns now. Accidentally moves his carrier off his main base, which is kind of funny. But I'm sure he will, sure he will rectify that soon. Now in Railgun War, of course, the Galaxian ability to reheal is not really very useful because you're never going to keep those things alive for very long. So, uh, if Reverend tries to counter this by making rails of his own, he's not going to be able to, so he needs to find some kind of alternate... some sort of alternate uh, way of attacking it. I think Honor Guards might be the answer, but I'm not sure if he has the eco for it. Because Refinery Mode is just now on the way. So 15 minutes into the game is pretty late for refinery mode. I'll, I'll just I'll just put that out there. Oh, these guys need to be backing away though. Ooh. Soul Railgun's gonna be able to trade rather effectively right there. But then on the retreat, they get pretty pretty much smashed. So that's kind of what we what we would expect. The Soul Railgun's very bad in a rail on rail fight. LAV is going to pick off a salvager right there, and here comes the carrier. Now, this thing is very heavily powered. And at this point, I don't really trust Reverend's ability, like, be, or that sounds really rude. What I mean to say is I don't trust his ability to win this game because he's so far behind using conventional means, all right? That's, that's not what I was saying, all right? <laughs> I don't trust that he'll be able to win this game on conventional means, so I'd like to see him just go ahead and get powers or four because that's kind of what you were building up to anyway, and I don't think anything else is really going to work for him. If he can get up to the, uh, what's it called? If he can get up to the Missile Barrage, maybe he can actually get something done here. That's kind of my thought. And yet, Powers are 4 on the way, so that's good. But, and like I said, I, I, I feel like Maze should have more Railguns by now. And probably he'd have a better time uh, against his opponent here, because he'd be able to push the Carrier much more easily. Um, assault Railguns would be entirely ineffective. You would have killed your uh, opponent's army much faster. Let's see, this is a bad situation for Reverend. He's forced to use his carrier to counter these LAVs that are running by, but he's trading tons of damage for it. Mark Target even getting popped, of course. Heavy Railgun on the back line about to go down now. This thing takes out a probe, which is quite nice. Yeah, I carried about half health now, which is pretty 
pretty sketchy. You don't want to be getting that low. And he has to retreat quite a distance before he can start healing so that he can be safe from these Rogans. So I think he's going to have to give up his economy here. Looks like he wants to push in again. That's not a good move. He's going to take more damage now. Okay, power 4 finished. You should immediately power up the speed, I think, and just get out of there. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, he could actually put power 5 in speed, and I think he's got to. Or else he might just get killed by these railguns right here. But that means he's going to have to lose all of his economy, so... I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like there's really a right option at this point, you know what I'm saying? Production cruisers getting stricken now, and of course they take a lot of damage from these railguns. Uh, they just barely got out of range there actually, which is quite lucky for Reverend, but he's got to keep moving. And I guess there's still a possibility he could try to attack his opponent with his carrier, but probably Maze can make railguns and be ready for him up on that side there. Oh, and he's so close to, uh, he's so close to Powers of 5 as well. But even if he got it, he wouldn't have the money to, um, wouldn't have the money to make those cruise, uh, those missile barrages. So May's kind of cutting it close if his goal was to, um, if his goal was to stop his opponent from getting Powers of 5. I, he, he doesn't know that, of course, like how close that is, that can't really be, oh, support cruiser anti-air. Do you think there's an air force here, man? <laughs> Actually, you you know there is. I mean, you've been seeing this the whole time. That's a move that I really don't approve of, but it's all right. Um, because <laughs> those those are some tasty RUs that you could be spending on railguns. He's already got RUs, so I guess it doesn't really matter too much. But still, that was definitely a bit of an odd move, I'd say. Well, he knows his opponent is coming around on the back line, and make no mistake, if if it comes to a carrier war. Nobody will lose to the Sovan, so I mean, he, he's actually got, you know, like a valuable thing going here if he can get his carrier up there. Actually getting outsped by these railguns though, because then he has power 2 in the speed. Um, I'd keep it up in speed until he got to where he can- oh, I see, he was trying to kill the base runner with that. But it, the extraction did go down, so that's a little unfortunate for him. <clears throat> Some railguns on the way, but fighter and gunship also on the way, and that's not going to do much really against this carrier. All he needs is railguns, so I, I think these choices here are a little strange. I can understand battlecruiser fabrication too, but I think the game's going to be over before you get there. Carrier's here now, and there's only two railguns to, to defend, so actually, suddenly this throws things kind of into question. But I still, I would trust Maze's chances on this. If worse comes to worse, in fact, he can power up his carrier, move down this way so that he's with his railguns, and he'll be fine. So, Riverman really needs to power up the, uh, the range here, because he's not actually shooting with these guys. PC goes down to the LAVs over here. And I gotta assume it's more railguns being made by Maze. So Reverend's finally gotten on top of him, which he needed to do, because he, he won't power up the range for some reason. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know, actually. I think this fight can still be taken by this number of railguns, at least, like, pretty pretty convincingly, to where, you know, the sub-1 carry can stay still. And that means that these guys are going to catch up and then be there. So th these guys will buy enough time, is essentially what I'm saying. Except that they're attacking salvagers, which I think is pretty funny. That's not what you want them to do, obviously. Yeah, he's figured it out. So he's attacking now the carrier properly. Here's these guys from the back end. And there will be no escape for the princess this time. As I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain this carrier just needs to be killed at this point. So, well done, Maze. Like I was saying earlier, he could have taken advantage of it sooner by making a couple less LAVs by not making blind anti-air, because getting the tech for it was good, and that actually makes a lot of sense, but then making the units was not so good because you had no indication your opponent was going to go for that. Um, however, he still takes the win, and in pretty good fashion too. Uh, and you gotta also remember this is the first game of the day and it's probably like 7am for him, so you know, <laughs> that's definitely a factor. But yeah, that was pretty well done by him. Um, and I think the biggest thing we can learn by this is don't leave your production cruiser out in the open if you haven't seen what your opponent is doing yet because in this situation that really cost Reverend the game. I, mean, I kind of feel like it was over from the five minute mark when that production cruiser got killed or whenever that was. Valiantly fought till the end, managed to take it to the 11 minute mark, but um, and that's good for me because more, more view minutes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dirty YouTube scum. But yeah, nicely done to Maze. I should be getting the replay for the last match of round one, like tomorrow or may hopefully today. So I'll be able to cast that tomorrow and then move on to round two. But until then, I will see you 
when I see you, I guess.